My name is Russell Laslako. Uh, I came to the United States when I was 17 and uh, pursued my education here in, uh, uh, in Idaho. And um, I ended up doing this film uh, based on the legendary uh, marathon runner Abebe Bekila. I'm Davey Frankel. I made the film with Ross and uh, we met through a mutual friend who put us together. I studied in Kenya, had made a f documentary film in Kenya, two documentary films, but had studied there and made a thesis film. And uh, when Ross and I met, we felt like we kind of understood the uh, subject matter and the place and had a vibe and got together to make this film you're about to watch. So thanks for coming. We hope you enjoy. I came from Berlin to New York to meet him and we met for Ethiopian food as we often do and I asked Ross like you know did you bring your the tapes is ever you got the tapes to watch and he handed me a letter and I opened the letter and the letter was Ross describing to me why he felt he should play the role of a Bebe Bekila and in addition to this letter he had also photocopied just a shot of his eyes on a piece of paper. So I sat down after reading the letter and had this meal with Ross, looking at him across the table, thinking like, wow, you know, are we really going to do this? Ross had, had never acted in a film before, um, but since has gone on to win Best Acting Awards. So uh, it was, it's, he's a natural. But, uh, Thank you. <laughs> and so, so I, by the end of this meal, I had been watching Ross uh, so intensely that he, I felt like, wow, you know, he's really has something there. He's really looking at you. He, you feel him. And uh, he knew the character better than anyone else. And he would always be available when we needed him. So yeah, that was also helpful. I thought that that was uh, all, all meant we should do it. And so we went to Norway the first time and there was only two, I think Bikila had one line of dialogue and there were like four lines of dialogue in total for the 13 pages of the script or something like that. And, uh, and so we thought we'd start off and give it a test run. And Norway worked out so well. Yeah, I mean, there, we've never had anybody ever say, you know, it's kind of weird. They were both speaking no. different languages. It just like doesn't even register for anybody, which I think is great that we were able to, to build that weave. And then also the editing process was also really interesting because I don't speak Amharic. Yeah. So, I mean, well, even the shooting process was great because, you know, we'd be sitting there shooting and I was just looking for emotion and making sure that the shot was together and we'd do a couple of takes and then I, if I felt like we had everything that I could perceive, I'd turn to Ross and I was like, did everyone say their lines correctly? Yeah. And yeah. Uh, Ross would be like, yeah, we got it. And I'd be like, all right, yeah. let's go to the next setup. And so that was very interesting. And then the editing process. Ross basically we went through um, and every take and he would he would break down each line we would do like beginning middle and end and then Ross would would give it a good very good for the line reading in Amharic and I basically sat there and I could by the end of it I kind of understood a lot of the Amharic yeah. I knew what they were saying in the English and the translation and so I was basically like weaving as many very goods together in the editing of each scene. Yes. And uh, and then a great story was is I'm sitting there in the editing room in Berlin cutting and I'm going through the scene where he goes to make the phone call to his family. And I'm sitting there and I was like, they say a line and it seems like, man, they're like a very long line for just like one line of dialogue in the yeah. script. And I, so I call Ross, I was like, you know, it's very strange. I cannot figure out this one scene. It just doesn't seem like you guys are saying the lines. He's like, oh, I forgot to tell you, we improv that whole scene. <laughs> and I was like, oh, <laughs> how, am I supposed to, how am I supposed to edit this scene? Yeah, so we went through on the phone and Ross yeah. went and translated everything that was being said in the improv. And then they weren't, the improv was not the same between takes. Like they would change the subject to like yeah. a different thing. And yeah. so Ross translated it out, I translated it per take, had it all written out, and then we started flipping things around and trying to make 
a scene out of the improvs. Yes. And um, it was good. I think only a couple times I'd clipped off like one Amharic word in the edit or something yeah. like that. We got, we, did, we got to it pretty quick. Yeah, I mean, I, the, as I said before, the whole, the whole process of making the film was very non-traditional, even I think in an indie sense. I, don't, I think nobody quite goes out. I mean, there are the people that raise a little bit of money and shoot pieces of the film, but we were, nobody does it on the scale. I mean, this was like literally a global independent film. We shot from the Arctic Circle down to the equator um, over many years shot 35 millimeter film which nobody does anymore um, and so part of it was that process of putting the pieces in place along the way and so first uh, Ross raised a little bit of money to do the Norway shoot it was only four days as I said before we only had five people in crew so we kept it really small but we were shooting in a ski resort in the most expensive country on the planet so even that was you know crazy we were there were eight of us living in a four bedroom condo making all of our meals together um the logistics of that with the weather changing like every two hours and you're shooting a race that takes place over a day you know how do you deal with it being cloudy and snowy and then turning all sunny and so the logistics of that were really intense so we went to norway and we shot that and then we came back and had this beautiful footage of the race in norway Plus we had the archival films, the Olympic films, and then we put together some text cards and we made sort of a trailer to sort of talk about the, the project and the film and then raised some more money to go and shoot in Ethiopia the first time, but we could only raise enough money to shoot available light. So we couldn't shoot any of the night stuff because we didn't have enough money to actually bring in all the equipment because there's no production services on that level in Ethiopia. They're starting to shoot a lot of DV movies. Um, so there's, you know, some lights and things like that, but nothing sort of on the scale that we wanted to do. So we did that and then we had this amazing footage from Ethiopia to go along with the Norway stuff and again, the Olympic films. And so putting all those together, we cut like a really beautiful four minute mood trailer that, uh, that then we showed to Darren Walsh in, in Berlin and he was you know, very excited about the project and got on board and raised the money to shoot the last half of the film. So at that, that point was like the transformation where we are like, like wow, okay, we've got like, we know we're gonna finish shooting this movie, let's plan this. We went to Bulgaria to shoot uh, for England, to double for England for uh, financing reasons and also because we thought it would probably be easier to make things look like 1969 in Sofia, Bulgaria than to actually go to England and, and shoot that stuff. Mm -hmm. And then we went back, then we cast Oni and then we went back to Ethiopia for the last time and actually brought in all the lights and did all the interiors and the night stuff and, and uh, finished it off. And so that's sort of the long drawn out process that we went through. Yeah, from the outset, I um, you know had intended to uh, to show Mikila's story in a positive light, and also from the perspective of an Ethiopian, um, because uh, one of the main reasons was that um, oftentimes the uh, the African characters are depicted negatively, uh, and um, you know by by the uh, maybe Western filmmakers or other filmmakers, and um, or I must say, uh, not so much uh, research has been done about the con about about the continent. That uh, I found most of the films to be a bit shallow, and it was very important for me to depict this great hero uh, in a very uh, in a very careful careful way. The idea, also I knew that the idea would be, would be a great one because a lot, a lot of people knew about this barefoot water. And I also had to make sure that uh, I didn't want to sell this, this, this script or the idea to anybody else. And the only way that this film could be done is in a very, 
in, in a way where I had to partner myself with somebody who would understand my vision. And uh, that, that's, that's, that's when I met Davey. And um, I think from that point on, it was important from, for us to make sure and go ahead to, um, to shoot the film on our own and uh, prepare a package because um, uh, in order to raise funds or any other things, it, it, it would be, we knew, I knew that it was going to be very difficult just to go with a script and just give me the money, but it would be very, you know, helpful to have it attached with some images. And that's when I started asking Davey, how are we going to shoot this film? Where is the money? Where are we going to be able to do it? And the, uh, you know, uh, Davey cut the, the, the trailer to raise the funds. And they uh, were fascinated by the, the way the, the cinematography and, and the idea were, were presented.